Well, what do you know? Good day to you. Um, this has really been killing me. I'm going to have to plug this in and see if this at least works. Uh, trying really hard not to start another project. Get too many projects scattered around. <clears throat> but I think if I just fire this up and see if it works, I'll be okay. So let's do that. I'll meet you over on the old little workspace there. Okay. We're back after more annoyances. I mean, slowly creeping it up here. Oh, let's see if we can. I don't know how badly this thing will need an antenna. Yeah. Oh, these sets are kind of interesting. A lot of the Hellcrafters have kind of balanced um, antenna inputs. Just kind of interesting to me. And it's a little time bomb too. If somebody actually has used the balanced input, probably a, maybe a somebody in the know or a ham operator, maybe. Um, they might, there's a little, there's actually three screws back there with a little link that connects two, one to ground. And if somebody's used that, you go hooking up a new antenna, you don't know anything about it, you, you may get very limited reception if you don't short that link or hook it up properly. Oh, well, there's a little buzz in there. No, well, there's some radio there. Let's creep up another 10, 15 volts. It's pretty quiet. Okay, I'll let it warm up a little bit. Like I said, I really should have took the bottom off. I should have left the bottom off. And I don't know. I was gonna do it and not do it. Ah, <sighs> decisions, decisions. It'd be great if I could just do as I darn well pleased. The time is never my own. got a few little dings. Not bad, though. They're more like little scuffs. This thing is really, you know, if I, there's some, I think it's just dirt. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of weird. There's a perforated area over here, and then there's the speaker. Oh, but that's where that, remember I showed you that lead? I wonder if that goes over there. Well, let's see how we're doing. No more security updates. That means you're vulnerable to hacker attacks even if you have... Oh, you're vulnerable. Windows made a decent product with, what was that, Windows 98? Seemed pretty stable. And now they've discontinued it. And then they left, I don't know how many million ATMs unguarded. So people just never smarten up. This virus or malware attack. Upgrade your OS. Hmm. Well, I mean, overall, it looks like it's working. Um, it's that receiver standby switch is kind of interesting because it uh, it looks like they just open the cathode on the IF tube. I can't remember if that's a, I'm just guessing, I think it was like a 12SA7 or S, I don't know. It's one of the 12S series. I kind of have fond memories of all these radios that use those um, metal tubes with the glass output tube and the glass power supply tube. To me, that's, I'm just going to say it, a proper 
All-American Five, but there are a lot of different versions. Those are the ones I grew up with, that's why I have an affinity for them. Well, let's see, what time is it? We could maybe, we could get uh, WWV. Let's see, that appears to be band three. And we're still running on reduced power here. We could creep up a few more volts. So does that. Like the uh, speaker switch needs a little work. That doesn't sound good. We got a lot of we got a lot of uh, flamethrower AM stations here in town. This thing probably won't hear that well. Well, that's a, a religious station that's pretty close. The way you destroy them is by offering... Reset the band spreader here and try again. I think it's really touchy. Here's to work. Uh, that's, uh, what's his name? That's the short way. Uh, what is that guy's name? Dick Jones or something or something like that? No, Robert Smith. I can't remember. That's interesting. The BFO and the AM seem to not track very well. I and mean, what I mean by that is normally when you you zero out the BFO, usually you can detect AM with it. It's pretty narrow sometimes. But it doesn't seem to be working. Alex Jones, not Dick Jones. Dick Jones? Who the heck is that? Open to get six nine one. Let me pause just a sec here. There we go.
<laughs> well, I raised the, uh, that's interesting, I raised the voltage about 15 volts. Sweet. That's a light. There's a light. It's right up there. Well. Hmm. Okay. Appears to be kind of working. So I guess all those repairs in there are at least hanging in there. There's a few I don't care for. I still might pry this open peek around in there a little more. Actually, I'm going to pry this open and peek around a little more. Kind of puzzled as to why the BFO, well, actually I'm not puzzled as to why the BFO um, doesn't work real well. Like I said, it appears to be kind of more of a kind of a feedback circuit on one of the IF tubes, or the, the IF tube. If you want to look at the schematic, there's a link below, and of course my page is broken half. It's kind of weird. Sideband. So they ground something. If you can see this or not, probably not. It's uh, in the schematic. It's near um, the IF tube. It's V2, and it's a 12 SK7, not a 12 SA7. I think I guessed guessed wrong. It looks like if I had to guess, which I'll guess wrong again. Actually, it looks like they're taking the uh, If you can see that that switch there, it's kind of chopped off. There, there's a cap there that they release, and this is, I think, the AGC line. They ground that. I'm not sure. Um, right off the bat, why they do that. I've seen it quite a bit where they they knock out the AGC. Would make it a, I would think would make it a little annoying, especially on something like this. There is no attenuator control unless you have a external attenuator. I might have to read up on that. The other half of that is uh, there are two caps there. There's like C8 and C10. They're kind of gimmick type caps. I showed you that earlier. I think the one I showed you earlier is C10. Well, I think I'm going to let this baby sit here and perk a little bit. Yeah. Appears to be just running away. Might sit down and study the schematic a little bit. So this apparently doesn't have a BFO coil in it. So that coil I pointed to you earlier in that first video was probably wrong too. Oh, man, they're not doing so good here. Um, again, this is just the basic AA5. There's the power supply and the heater string. Remember we talked one time about these lights. Uh, this one has a shunt resistor with it. So it's kind of interesting. And there's the the little noise cap to ground. I think that's C26, like a point one, point oh one. You, know. you can use about anything in there at uh, 60 hertz. That looks like a super high impedance, or whatever you want to call it. This is a uh, kind of an interesting thing that I've noticed that Helicrafter does. When there's schematics, they always put the last labeled cap and resistor, which is kind of a good deal. 
it would always behoove a person to sit down and read these schematics real carefully. Sometimes there's some useful notes, and even even the servicing part of this or the alignment part of this, I thought I remember. Yeah, I did see that. Um, there was a. Where did I see that? Now, here's something about the BFO down here, which you can read. This is the servicing instructions. What the heck is that noise? Really weird. Um, there was a thing in here about closing up the tuning caps on both of them to get the get a tube out or something. And they've always got stuff pretty well labeled. If you find a good schematic. Have we seen that? I don't know. There's something about adjusting the BFO. Set to switch. Poke around. Looks pretty hazy. I've seen some uh, guys uh, make little B uh, true BFOs. Uh, you could build one out of a FET pretty easy. You might have to do a little jimmying around, but um, there's nothing to stop you from putting a, an external one and running a little piece of shielded wire or some coax or something to the back. Again, me personally, I don't know, kind of reduces the charm in them, but, you know, it's your radio to do what you want with. And if you have like 60 of them, it probably doesn't matter. Now this thing's in fun shape. Needs a little dusting. Ready to go back on the road. It's probably not that great of a receiver. I give it credit though, it's pretty stable. You can actually feel the uh, WWV transmits a 100 hertz tone. It's part of their encoding scheme and you can actually feel the radio buzzing. A really good radio, you can kind of hear it. No, there are no jelly beans over there to be had. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to let you scoot, and uh, if you want to come back a little later, if you join my channel, you'll get a little notification if you like these sorts of things. And I do appreciate all the folks that have subscribed. Uh, always think it's kind of cool that people want to watch what I'm doing. If I could figure out a way, I'd just set up a bunch of cameras in the basement, in the shop, and let the good times roll, but... No, 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 it doesn't work that way. Things just clunking away. A little noise, I don't know if that's WWV or... Well, I'm gonna leave it go for a while. Just sit here and kind of watch it. And I just, what is that noise? I gotta go investigate that. Take it easy.